All right, everyone, this is Dr. Mack with another video. We have uh, Dr. Nimra with us. Uh, a big congratulations to you, Dr. Nimra. It's a big accomplishment, especially with your result. You have literally passed everything. I remember my time. This was this moment is just yes. unbelievable. How do you feel? Oh, I'm so happy. I feel like I've um, achieved my biggest dream and yeah. I've uh, overcome all the fears that I had. And I finally feel like um, so happy in my new life already. Yeah. And it's so exciting to be here, um, especially because we used to study here. We, we used, used to study to, here. This is behind the cameras. This is where the magic happened. We used to study here. We used to make notes here. We used to do some work here. And then all of a sudden, I'm back here and all that time and effort that we put in. And sharing the experience now? Yeah, has actually you know resulted in a path. So... I feel really happy and grateful. Yeah, yeah that, that's amazing, yeah. actually. That's what I was like, you know, we're sitting here today, just, res uh, you know, discussing yeah. the result of the same person. You'll see all the communication yeah. videos or most of the communication videos. Yeah. So yeah. that is, that is amazing. It's, it's actually a very uh, motivational for myself as well. Yeah. You know, it takes a lot of effort to build what you're building with the teaching and with the courses and yes seeing how it actually helps yes, and the feedback right. and uh, you know seeing your result it was like you know make made me so happy yes. that every single last time has actually yes. it wouldn't have been the same if i had just um you know trusted myself alone and done this journey alone it was uh, because of all of my family my colleagues and my teachers my mentors that i was able to reach the destination but uh, I feel like um, if I just went straight away, I wouldn't have performed the same way. But in the exam, I was trying to recall everything that we did together here. And at that time, I was very nervous. On the day of the exam, uh, especially before the OSCEs, I was, I was trembling. I was so nervous. And then I took a deep breath and I tried to recall what we did here. And I said, all right, I know what we did here. I'll just do that here. So in the exam. And I replicated everything and I, I was so happy when I saw past grades because it was getting that assurity that whatever we did together was right. It was the right way. And it's always confusing, yes. isn't it? Because yes. I, I have seen it happen with me as well. You do one teaching yes. and half of the people you meet won't agree with me. Like, you know, this is not the right way. Yes. Yes. And then I personally believe it's it's. It's hats off to mm -hmm. the student or the candidate as well mm -hmm. that they actually believe in, you know, yes, like the teaching. Mentor. And then what yes. we're teaching, you actually still sticking with that and following it because I feel that makes a lot of difference. Because yes. when yes. you combine different theories, yes. it's just in a confusion state. And that's why you'll notice a lot of people say, please don't discuss with other people. Yes. Just whatever you've stick learned. Stick to one. Always it's important to stick to one mentor or one teacher and trust them. Um, honestly, like everybody else, I may have had those doubts as well. Am I doing the right thing? Am I in the right place? Is this the way we're supposed to perform in the exam? Uh, is this the way I need to do my OSCE? For example, I never used to move my hands. Remember? And then you said that in a communication, you need to express, you need to move. So in the exam, I trusted you and I did it that way. The body language. The body yeah. language. Uh, I was not stiff. You know, I loosened up. I moved my hands. I did like, I'm talking to somebody. This is a real life conversation. These are my real patients. I need to help them. I need to treat them. I need to feel their pain. I need to understand them. So the questions that I ask them, the answers should help me, guide me. They should be meaningful questions. So when I replicated everything over there, I could see that my patients are getting happy. They are connecting with me. There is a bond bonding going on. And even with the examiner, yes. they're not real patients, yes. but you could see their body language or their exactly. reaction is like, oh, she knows what she's saying. Yes. Remember when we were doing the videos, I was like, you know, your examiner does help. They help. They guide you if you're going in the right direction and they can see that you're trying. You're trying every single second in those 10 minutes. They start helping you. They start asking you questions which they want to know the answers of yeah. or which you're actually going to score the marks. Mm -hmm. So, for example, in one of the OSCEs, I was unsure if I need to give post-op instructions here. So the patient or the examiner said, what do I do now? So that's when I understood they are marking me for this. So mm -hmm. they were prompting me, they were helping me because they saw my determination or they saw that I want to... 
um, help them out today. So that's no, that, that's yeah. amazing. And it was fun. It was actually fun learning here um, <laughs> because initially when I came, I used to be so scared and I was so <laughs> unsure and I had such a confused approach. And then Dr. Max started guiding me and he was like um, telling me step by step from scratch to the highest peak. This is how you have to do it. And um, when I went to the exam, I actually enjoyed it. I didn't have that scared or confused approach. I felt like I'm the dentist here. I'm the one who's going to control everything. And I'm on the driving seat. Nobody needs to show me the map here. Nobody needs to give me the directions. I'm going to do it and everyone's going to be with me. <laughs> <laughs> and and, um, and I, I used to see the difference and I used to tell you that go home yes. and now watch your video. Yes. Because the initially when we started doing the video recording process, yes. you could see with the first video and the 10th video, yes. you could see your mistakes. Yes. You could see your body language changing now that, okay, what was I doing yes. in the first video? Yes. And yes. we would have never yes. known that if we would have not recorded, not recorded it. it. So I would actually suggest everybody who is uh, going to do any exam that involves an interview or a communication to actually uh, sit in front of the mirror or put their recording on and just talk anything for 10 minutes and then watch themselves and even i would say like even if like two colleagues like you know right. two friends right. practicing with each other which a lot of people have study yes. buddies and stuff yes do a video call yes do a video call and screen record or video record that yes. conversation yes. so then you can compare it in then like three months time or yes. in two weeks time right. initially what have we changed or what were you doing because you know yes. how we do before and after photos during the yes. process of any case we're doing? Yes. The yes. same thing, unless and unless you don't record it or you document it, how you don't know. How we improved? And another thing I personally felt is that uh, I had very uh, few study partners, uh, maybe just one or two, and we used to do it on the phone. So when I went in, when I came here to Dr. Mark or when I went in the exam, I realized eye contact is something which is so important and it is completely ignored in those Skype or Zoom sessions. It is completely ignored and this is a vital part of your OSCE to actually look at somebody in the eye and talk to them face to face. I think a lot of people, I'll be very honest, uh, message me from such a long time that, you know, don't you teach communication? Yes. And I think you are the first few lucky yes. people to actually sit with me and actually do the communication yes. course which was the part of the new online course now that we are putting. Yes. So that actually um, made me understand and made me happy as well, you know, how it's actually beneficial. Because you yes. notice a lot of people great at technical, but then they fail in communication or OSCEs. And then some people are great at OSCE, but they fail in technical because yes. they both have to be in the balance. Yes. So I feel like uh, it's important to learn both ways because you don't know, maybe next time you go and you, Technical is not good or your OSCE is not good. So both ways have to be, you know. And what I liked is also that uh, if I said one thing, you always enhanced it. You taught me how to make it better. Rather than saying this is wrong, leave this on the side, start a new thing from scratch. It was not like that. What I was doing was just improving. We kept adding more and more information, more and more points which were relevant, which helped me to improve. So I didn't have to really change who I am or the way I am, but rather just grow bigger and better. I think that's that's very important because mm -hmm. I feel uh, everybody has its own style as well, right? right? Right, Sometimes I feel with the learning, your style is completely put down and then you have taught to learn something really new. Something new from scratch, which is very difficult because in that pressure situation, in that exam, unfortunately, it doesn't work. The natural thing yes. is going to come Somehow out. they know how to create a situation in which your natural self will come. Your natural accent, your body language, your knowledge base, all of that is your, going to be yourself. I cannot pretend to be somebody who I'm not. That, that's so true. Yeah. That's so true. Uh, yeah. I want to ask you, Nimra, like, uh, what was your, because you have done some previous courses, like yes. on-site courses as well. You've done different communication courses as well. Um, and we don't want to take names and stuff, but I want to, I want to know doing this cause you did the comprehensive online course with myself and then you did some one-on-one -on -one assessments and communication as well. Yes. What difference did you find or it is, was it similar? What is some difference that you found that might, uh, felt a bit better 
or with your lifestyle did you feel online because a lot of people mm -hmm. always i i get so many questions from people saying that you know no i still want to do on site if i do if i do online mm -hmm. i will miss out on my learning was there something that you felt with that for me the best part the biggest part of this course was that i feel like i connected with my mentor i'm not saying this because i know you i'm sitting with you but somehow there was a connection i feel like you were able to understand what i need it was not a generic course which is out there for everyone to just come and do and go home i felt it was catered to my needs it was able to recognize where i'm lacking what do i need to do here so that was the number one difference having a direct contact a direct relation with my teacher who is able to connect with me and bond second thing is that um it was really detailed it was really comprehensive uh my previous courses were short and quick somehow i was not able to grab much here because it was a very slow paced gradual step by step guide so i was able to do it at my pace and pick up the things that i need then usually what happens is we go to a course we do something and we come home and it's over here what was different was i had to come back to you <laughs> <laughs> i was forced to come back to you to show you what i've been doing on my own mm -hmm. whether it's at home or it's in a practice clinic or in an academy whatever i have been doing i need to come back and show it to you and then in a very positive way in a very encouraging way i was learning what are my mistakes here and not just what are my mistakes but how to correct them that was the biggest part because for all of us pointing out mistakes is very easy but unfortunately nobody can tell not everyone can tell us how to correct them so under pressure uh under nervousness i used to feel really like sad that why is this not happening why am i like this but the way you used to tell me that this is how you can correct it and this is how you have to do it i was able to understand even in that nervousness and pressure i felt it was simplified and that's how i feel that step by step i was going to improve and then usually in a course when i was earlier doing things and coming home i feel like i would forget which is very natural we're all human beings we can't remember every single detail we can't write every single detail in this course the best part was that there was always a module or a video or a audio session something or the other to go back to and relearn and redo so repetition was also a very big factor or a key here to be honest uh, when i did my post grad diploma the digital orthodontics um, the ortho one uh, it was a uk based diploma and uh, i did it all online wow. and i i was really doubtful initially as well that you know like is this is going to work is it not going to work if i'm not sitting next to someone or but i realized it with the busy schedule with work wise and my personal commitments it worked for me a lot better in a way that i can go back home and maybe in those two days i didn't have time but the next five days if i have more time i can cater to how much i can cover i don't have to push that maybe you know i have to finish like if it's a two yes. weeks course you have to finish in two weeks exactly. yes you can finish in two weeks yes. but then you can finish in a month as well exactly. if you want to it caters to your pace it caters to your timings and a repetition which i think we all really need to any kind of course we go to whether it's even a cooking course we need repetition to be perfect at what we're doing to to i personally feel to review it because yes. even with myself as well to be honest mm. even now i feel like you go to a very amazing implant course mm. and you come back after 6 weeks and you always have you won't forget everything but you always have this two doubt that you know i don't remember how did they teach me how to do that corner mm. or how to put the bone and that's the time you know it starts getting doubtful and yeah. after 6 yeah. months half of the things are gone away so yes. that's why i was like if you have a program that you can review it review, review the exactly. video every time before doing an amalgam or every time before doing a crown prep just open the video review all the key points the necessary things then the finer things and then the things which if they're there it's good enough if they're not there it's still doable it will still work for a client for a patient 
So I used to plan my work in this way that I watch the video and then I'll do it. So it's all fresh in my mind. Most important question, which <laughs> which is very important for everybody to understand, because um, people think once they pass and they see someone's journey and they um, they see someone that you know, oh, that's amazing accomplishment. Now they'll be seeing your work, you working as a dentist mm -hmm. in Australia and everything. Uh, they feel you know, oh, that's great. Uh, but that must have been really easy. Mm, yeah. <laughs> they don't understand, yeah. right? There's a lot of hard work and background done in the past. There's a lot that so goes on behind the My camera. question is, was it easy? It was incredibly difficult. Incredibly difficult to the extent that some days I would think I'm going to die. That mm. is how hard it was. Mm. But I worked so hard, so hard. And I made sure that, you know, the, with the support of my my mentors or my family and friends and my colleagues that we make it happen with hard work and dedication and that continued passion. But I feel Nimra, one thing is very important, like mm -hmm. you will find mentors, you will find courses, but I personally feel it's the candidate himself. Yes. That's the main driving force, yes. right? Yes. Even I cannot help you if you are not the main driving force, For right? For this exam, we can't be lazy. We need to work day and night. We need to sacrifice every little thing that comes our way we have to remove our social life we have to compromise on family life we have to sacrifice our jobs our, our meeting our parents you know very big things are put at stake um, but we have to let everything go and just focus on this um, my personal I haven't seen my parents for years I haven't visited my family I sacrificed my travel plans I um, I'm a mother, I had to put my daughter away from me and just put all my energy, all my time for months and months in this and then the magic starts happening, then things start improving and that's how they change. Doing five crown preps or five composites is not enough before we go to this exam. It goes in hundreds, five hundreds or like Dr. Max says thousands. <laughs> you have to do it so many times and repeat it and repeat it that there comes a time that you can close your eyes and do it. And that is when you are guaranteed that when you go to the exam, you will perform. And I, I keep telling everyone that initially when I used to post videos and people would be like, you know, this guy is crazy. Like he's saying it will take you at least three to five years. It can even take you more. It, it can, can even take you less. You know, yes. everyone has a different journey. Exactly. But it takes time. For me, I was one of the slower ones. It used to take me a lot of time. I was not very smart, but I was a hard worker. And uh, I had that motivation in me. And I had some inspiration around me. And I used to follow that. And I used to look up to those people. And that's how I worked hard and hard and super hard with the right guidance. Doing the same mistakes again and again is not going to get me anywhere. I understood that point. So I used to take guidance, improve, improve, and then gradually we become good enough. And I feel like, you know, that, that um, very important, like it's, it's, it's easy to say, but people who have been through the journey, like yeah. you can completely understand me saying this now, yeah. that never give up attitude. Because, you know, when it doesn't happen the first time, people are like, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna sell my... Because I, when I see a lot of people selling their home setup, I'm like, have you finished? No, no. I'm done. Mm -hmm. It's it's not easy. And if there are times that you are like, okay, I'm going to give up and I am done. I don't want to do it anymore. But that's how it is, you know? Yeah. You don't know. Maybe the next time you gave the exam, you would have done it, you know? Yes, maybe it was yes. the third time you did it, you would have done it. But I think the most crucial thing is... You have to keep giving it. You have to keep doing it. You have to keep trying. Uh, taking an exam is very important because we tend to find the stations or the areas we are weak in. So next time, work harder in those areas. That's what my strategy was. And um, keep trying, keep doing it. Never give up. Find out your mistakes. Find out how to correct them. Practice, practice, practice until you become so good at it. That when you go to the exam, the examiner is just going to be like, hands up, she's here to pass. <laughs> yeah. And and to be honest, even now, like I love doing aesthetic dentistry and you must have seen my cases and stuff. Even now when I finish a case with my before and after and photos in the middle of all the process, I go to my principal dentist and I show it to him. Mm -hmm. And he says, Mac, this is great work. This is, I would say 11 out of 10, but mm -hmm. you can still take it to 
12 out of 10. Yeah. There's still there's two minor areas if you would have corrected and then so and you feel it with one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one assessments, right? Beautiful work. And as soon as you see, can you see here? Your mind opens <laughs> yes. up. Because um, you could never see that before, yes. even by doing 200 crowns. So, but exactly. as soon as... Assessments, best part is when I was doing, for me personally, the exam, I felt Dr. Mark is standing just beside me. <laughs> <laughs> I could hear him say, Nimra, correct this. Why does this, <laughs> why are you focusing on the beauty? This should not be as high as it is. This should be lower than the adjacent cusp. So when I was carving my amalgam, I could hear him say things to me. When I was doing my crown preparations, I could hear him say, smooth in that margin. Keep it above <laughs> one of them. He said it so many times to me that in the exam, it was just built in me and I had no other option than to do it. So that was something which was very, very beneficial from the one-on-one -on -one assessments. Uh, because just, you know, as most of us are practicing at home, we are unsure of how good this is. Sometimes I would think my work is very below average, unsatisfactory, but when I would bring it to you, you would say it's it's pretty much good. It's in borderline or it's unsatisfactory. And sometimes I would think it's highly satisfactory and I would come here only to find out that this is below <laughs> average. So that mindset gets clarified. Um, you know, I, I was able to understand what am I doing here? What is right? How much more do I need to go? And... Um, Having somebody with you just makes it a bit easier. I feel yeah. like it's so important, and especially with the ADC when you have a criteria. Like mm -hmm. when I teach dental students now, there are American board exams mm -hmm. uh, that people are doing the American board exams, but there's American dental students, mm -hmm. Australian dental students, when you see their grading, grading criteria, mm -hmm. if you fail the assessment, you can do it again. Yes. We don't get this chance. Not at all. So it's so important and you will notice that there's a reason why I had the videos of avoid the social media trap. Yes. I'm more worried when I see someone's work more beautiful because mm -hmm. as soon as it goes towards how it looks, we forget about the criteria. The criteria. And majority of the time, a lot of candidates, like I used to see your work and I was like, you know, you think it bad, but when I'm seeing it, Mm. I'm looking at it from the grading criteria and the pass and fail point of view mm. and actually it works better yes. than someone's work who looks amazing on Instagram. But it's not a 1.2 mm margin. It's not going to work for the lab or the patient. So with this also with this course, I understood the concepts, not just the criteria, but the concept behind the criteria was given to me. That made it very easy for me to remember why am I doing this? Why does this need to be supra gingival? Why do I need to have finger rests? So I had a concept behind everything I was doing. So it was very clear. My vision was very clear. And even if you see some of the tips and tricks in my book, and I feel like the most uh, important essence that I, I've tried my level best to develop because it used to happen with me, it's not about if someone can do a good work. Mm -hmm. If they do something wrong and in the exam scenario it's a stressful scenario you will do a mistake definitely how to correct yes. it like you were telling me about when the contact didn't you know it it, it never comes so perfect it right it was hor it was horrifying for me actually in the exam situation what happened was that i had a three six amalgam and the tooth next door was far apart there was maybe a two millimeters gap between the two molars between the three six and the three seven so initially i because I knew how to do it, I was very confident. I spent a good amount of time burnishing that matrix band, putting in the wedges. I condensed my amalgam into those boxes. But somehow when I removed the band, there was no contact. Now, had I been my old self, I would have just left it like that saying, it looks good. It's functional to some extent. It's neat. It's there. Okay, fine. Let's move on to next task. But because I was taught that it is mandatory to have a contact, I started thinking, what do I need to do now? Time is running out. I'm in the middle of the exam. Then I remembered that I was taught and I was also shown in the videos that break the contact just from where it needs to and redo it in a time-saving, friendly manner, mess-free manner. Redo it and then how to correct it on all of those things. So I did exactly the same steps and then I checked on vision and with floss I actually had a really good contact 
And then similarly, I remember I used to have issues of cusp location in American cusp height. So I was taught those. So whenever I would finish the task, I would know I need to look for these things. If it's not right, how do I correct it without redoing the entire thing? And then I used to correct it in that way. And you notice like some of my other candidates also tell me like there was another girl she was telling me the other day that in this exam my when my contact did not appear in the first go mm -hmm. my body language is still comfortable because i already knew how to correct yes. it i feel like when you know like if a surgeon is putting an implant or he's doing an extraction and he breaks the mandible for a general dentist they would be like heads on the toes and you know they'd be like worried and flustered that I approach yes but for a certain they'd be like okay I'll just you know I'll fix it up fix, I'll fix it. the mandible yes. the same thing is if you know how to correct the contact yes then and you felt it right in the yes. exam scenario in the middle you'd be like okay I know I know how to do this in a quick way because time runs really fast over there hmm. so I did exactly those steps and I reached my destination I got the contact that is what I was redoing it for Sometimes even after redoing it, we can't get it if we've done it initially the same um, steps. So that trick of redoing it and getting it was so remarkably helpful in the exam. It saved me so much stress and anxiety and rushing and dropping things. None of that happened because I was confident that what do I need to look for and how do I need to correct it? Mm. Even with the other tasks, how to smooth the margins, how to round the tooth. All these things are like you know how the criteria is avoid sharp line angles how to remove all those things sometimes we feel we've removed it but it's still there so I mean it was so helpful starting from basic levels like which bars to use how to hold the handpiece which sequence to do your work in to a high-end level like how to redo things how to correct your mistakes so it, it was a wide range and it covered every single aspect that it needed to take this exam and to pass this exam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was really helpful. I call it like the Netflix of ADC. You can, you can <laughs> yeah. review the videos like as many episodes. times. <laughs> yeah. You can review the videos as many times as you want. But Nimra, no, this is like an amazing accomplishment. I, I always like remember my day. I still remember my day 11th June. <laughs> yes. uh, so you, you will never forget your yes. day and the day and the time and you know. Yes, actually it was also my daughter's birthday. Oh, wow. <laughs> you, you sent yeah. me the voice message and yeah. it made me really emotional when I heard your voice message, I'll be really honest. Three years ago, I was gifted my daughter and then three years later, I was gifted the gift of ADC. On the same yeah. daughter's birthday. Yeah. That's actually... She's going to get two extra gifts on her birthday <laughs> yeah. and she'll never know why. <laughs> so it was beautiful for us and I, I really want that everybody who is doing ADC to um, experience the beauty of this moment, to get a pass score. And um, if somebody like me can do it, I, I would say anyone can do it. Because Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Mack is a witness. I started from scratch. I started from a very, very basic level. My communication was still not bad, a bit stronger, but my tasks were horrible. So if I can work hard and change my destiny, then each and every candidate out there can do the same. It's just about being strong, confident, having the right clan with you, the right village around you, who supports you, who believes in you, constantly motivates you. And I just want to thank everyone out there who has been a source of inspiration, who has been a mentor for me, who has believed in me when I had no belief in myself and helped me out and give me the courage to take such a big exam, such a big mighty journey and finish it in, in the beautiful, most beautiful so way. So Nimra, who was your uh, motivational force uh, with your family? Like, you know, because there, there's always a time. It was, it happened with me as well. There was one time that, you know, I felt like I'm almost going to give up. You know, at that point, when it happened in your journey, who was your motivational force or what did you do to get back in and say, no, I'm going to give it again, but I'm going to make sure I, I, I keep giving until I pass, but I want to pass the exam. I will not just say that, okay, the journey is finished. What, what was your, um, it was within me, number one, it's not one particular person or somebody who's um, you know, a teacher or a, somebody who's on TV or a celebrity, this thing, this passion was always there from within me. I didn't mind repeating exams or redoing things to pass. 
So it came from within me, in my family, I really look up, let's say, to my sister, because she's also a doctor, she's an inspiration for me. But um, anyone who is always trying or constantly doing things, never giving up, so it's everyone around me, not just one person. That's amazing. Yeah, but I always have this force that no matter, even if I have to do it a hundred times, <laughs> I'm going to do it. I think I've said this in one yes. of my videos that I plan to give it a hundred times. Excuse yeah. me. Because so, I thought after a hundred times, I won't be alive anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know so. one thing that I will never give up, even God forbid if I have failed all the stations, I will still go back and keep trying and keep trying. Because if you keep knocking on the door in the right way, one day it will open for you. And that yeah. that's so true. And that is yeah. that is amazing. Like because yes. um, I feel it's just the ability of not giving up that makes it more special. Yes. It's yes. not special if someone can do a beautiful crown prep or a filling. Mm -hmm. It's special when they can do something wrong and recreate it. Yes. Recreate it to the same level. Like when we do cooking, because I love cooking. I talk a lot about yes, food. Me too. <laughs> there's something called as mock technique yes. what mock technique mean, means is when you don't have the right ingredients hmm. but you end up something similar to what you initially planned or end up with the same dish it's the same with anything we do in life anything with dentistry you might not get the right tools or you might not be at the right place at that time yes. but you still need to recreate and build it back to the yes. final result yes. and once you get the final result it doesn't matter how you reach there yes. you know you have reached it and that's yes. yeah. but special thank you Dr. Mac I know that you said don't thank me uh, <laughs> I've just been a middle man and you told me that please don't do any extra reviews and just uh, don't say it so publicly but I really want to thank you because you were the best mentor that I ever had starting from my dental school had I met you <laughs> earlier I would have finished this journey much much earlier it was not just the work that I learned here or the assessment. It was a complete grooming, a complete shaping. Uh, I knew when I went to the exam, how am I supposed to conduct this entire thing? How do I stand? How do I sit? What are my steps? So I was really groomed and polished. And I give that entire credit of that aspect of the exam solely to you. No, no, I really appreciate it. Because uh, definitely, like everybody would have seen, my name has been uh, a part of many tutor, tutors or academies, but I picked up the good from every. I wouldn't give the credit to one person, but the major chunk was from, from here that I learned my assessment, uh, the technical tasks, absolutely yes. And I was, um, my confidence building and my reshaping was completely done by Dr. No, no, I, I really appreciate I, I it. I think that I'm not even half the person that you are, but you were able <laughs> no, to no. tell me, and I did exactly the exam, and just the way the examiners loved you, they loved me as well. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell when the examiner is happy. Yeah. No, no, I, I really appreciate that, Nimra. But as I always say, and I was telling you while we were having a chat before the video as well, that um, mentors or anyone who's teaching or they can guide you, mm -hmm. like, but the driving force, as you said, the driving force was in it's me. It's always within. If yes. you didn't have the driving force, even I can't help you, right? Right. So yes. it's always with the candidate in yourself. If we we always have that feeling that you know, I really want something. Yes. Something, you know, the whole life's gonna turn around. But if you really badly want something, and as you said, you know, you have a very young daughter, you have yes. your family, you haven't seen your parents, you have to give those things away you can't get yes, everything I put in life. many important things away in my life and i sacrificed a lot to come to this end and i had persistence i was i had an ocd it was always triggering to do it to do it in a very nice way to do a good work to do a good oscillate because i knew from day one i don't want to just pass but i want to pass in a good way i want to make it uh, later on i should benefit from it as well and that's how it happened. Um, it was hours and hours and hours that I would just keep doing it and doing the crowns, doing the tasks again and again. And sit there all day, all night for months, for months and months and just chase it up. And um, it's not that you're my mentor just now, even in future, uh, when I'm working with real patients, I want to learn more and more from you because it's addictive, you know, when we sit together 
and we start doing it, this amazing magic happens. See, see the the learning never stops, right? I, I always say it's a, I posted something recently like why people are always asking me. I, I do so many courses, and then I mentioned in one of the comments is the learning stops. Only mm. in the grave, in the grave. right? Yes, you yes. you don't stop it. But that's important actually, yes. because oh, yes. your the person's driving force has to be in in yes. them. I'm still in the ADC sessions. I'm still in the groups, and people are asking me, "Why are you still here? Why are you attending the lectures?" Um, but learning doesn't stop, and mm. it's my passion. It's my addiction now. Mm. So that's what we live for. You know? That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you for your time, Nimra. I really appreciate everything and motivating other people because yes. they're going to watch you yes. and they're going to feel... Because yes. uh, I, I feel like there are a lot of people out there they still feel that, you know, this is something impossible. This is not impossible. Yes. Like anything in life, it's you won't get it that easy. It's not easy, but it is possible with hard work and a lot of patience. And also, there's no need for us to be disheartened. We have to focus on the positive, on how to learn and correct, rather than keep thinking, why didn't this work out? Why is this wrong? Why did I fail? I have failed in the exam. I have failed miserably. I never focused on my emotional aspect. I focused on the educational aspect of why I failed and how to correct it. I didn't try to make my heart weak. I didn't make, try to make myself sad over those points. I just ignored that aspect completely. No, that, that's true. No, no, I really appreciate yeah. sharing your experience. Yes, yes. So I'm very sure. Everyone mm -hmm. uh, who is already a dentist, who is aspiring to be one, ADC candidates, my special, special prayers for you. All the best. And one thing, each and every one of you will pass. As long as you keep trying, as long as you keep doing it, you will. And again, if I can do it, anyone can do it. <laughs> No, no, but I, yeah. I'm very sure a lot of people are going to get, you know, inspired and motivated from your journey. Yeah. And we all do. I still like I see so many people's journey and I get inspired even today. So, no, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing your experience with all of us. And then uh, definitely, as you said, the learning doesn't stop. Doesn't stop so it will yes. keep going. <laughs> Let's see what we do next. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, that